ahead of his highly anticipated matchup against three-time major winner Andy Murray. Tanasi Kokonakis sat down for a press conference. The least you'd expect from the journalist there is to remember his name, right? But nope. Instead, one journalist called him by his best friend's name, Nick Curios. For context, this happened after he defeated former world number nine, Fabio Fonini, in straight sets. Now, Kokonakis has had quite the year. He's the reigning men's doubles champion, and he's made it to the height of his career. Plus, he's one of Australia's top prospects for the first Grand Slam event of the year, the Australian Open. He's also playing in Melbourne, which has Australia's highest population of Greek Australians, a population that's been cheering Tanasi on during his games. One reporter had the ingenious idea to ask him about how he felt having such a massive crowd back backing him up and cheering him on during every game. The question's a pretty wholesome one, wouldn't you agree? I'd ask him the same thing, but I'd probably start off with, hi Tanasi, instead of, hi Nick. Yup, that happened. And Tanasi went red in the face when it did. So did the reporter, immediately after calling the man at the head of the table by the wrong name. The reporter started stuttering. Tanasi couldn't come up with anything to say for a hot minute because his jaw was on the floor. Both of them went red in the face before the Greek superstar broke the awkward silence with something that only made things more uncomfortable for a minute. Now that calls for a firing, said Tanasi. Now, I know what you're thinking. People make mistakes. Why would Tanasi say that? If you know the 26-year-old superstar at all, you'd know he was joking. At least, I hope he was. Anyway, the reporter tried to salvage the situation by laughing it off and moving on with the actual question he had, but not before Tanasi took another jab at him for calling him by Curios's name, who, by the way, isn't even participating in the Australian Open. Fret not, however, because Tanasi did end up answering the stuttering reporter's question. He said that he was ecstatic at having so much support in Melbourne. Again, it's been a pretty great year so far for Tanasi. He's one of Australia's top prospects to win the Australian Open, especially since since Nick Kyrgios announced his decision to pull out of the Grand Slam event this year and instead focus on recovering in time for the Indian Wells event in California. Nick's really been honing the skill of plot twists this year. More on that later though. At the time of the interview, Kokonakis had just wrapped up his rain-delayed first round clash against former world number one, Fabio Fanini. This was almost a day after the play was suspended with Kokonakis, only five points away from victory. Fans feared that their game would be delayed again after rain continued on during the morning of their game, but the sky had cleared up by evening, just in time for the Australian to swiftly complete an emphatic 6-1, 6-2, and 6-2 win in under three minutes against the Italian. Fabio only managed to claim one further point in the suspended game. The Nasi was ecstatic. He called it some match and claimed that it was a first for his entire career. The win put him in the line of fire against another high prospect at this year's Open, Andy Murray, who by the way had defeated a major tennis veteran in an equally thrilling upset as well. Yup. Murray beat number 13 seed Matteo Berrettini in an epic five set battle. Four hours and 49 minutes later and the three time Australian Open finalist was able to claim victory against a top 20 player for the first time since 2017. Once anticipated becoming the world's next Nadal, Murray's had to face more career setbacks than most players, owing to multiple injuries over the course of his career. However, it looks like the tennis star is finally able to perform to the best of his skills. And serve he did. Murray had to save match point in the final set and rallied in the deciding tie break to win 6-3, 6-3, 4-6, 6-7, 7-9, 7-6, 10-6, 7-6 in the Rod Laver Arena. During his post-match interview, Murray cheekily remarked that he'd be feeling the aftermath of the grueling game later that night and early morning the next day. But in that exact moment, he felt incredibly proud of himself, and he was only about to feel even more proud since he managed to defeat Kokonakis in another five-set epic game. Murray's game against Mateo became the longest game in the Australian Open this year, but it was quickly dethroned.
owned by Murray of the Future. The highly anticipated matchup against Kokonakis became the longest match in the Open this year, and the second longest game in the Grand Slam event in history, clocking in at 5 hours and 15 minutes. The game ended in a win for the Scottish player, and with 4-6, 6-7, 7-6, 6-3, and 7-5, Murray managed to reach the third round. Again, his winning streak this year is made all the more wholesome, considering the number of setbacks he's had to face over the past four years, especially after a joint replacement surgery left his career hanging by a thread. But not only did the tennis star prove that he can make a comeback, he proved that he could do it better than anyone else has ever done in the history of the sport. Murray playing and winning in spite of so many injuries that have plagued his career probably sets a bad example for one player in particular. I'm talking about none other than the bad boy of tennis himself, Nick Kyrgios. As promised, here's what I meant when I said that Kyrgios would have his own mention later in the video. The bad boy of tennis pulled out of the United Cup in December of 2022 at the very last minute. And by last minute, I mean that his teammates found out that he wouldn't be playing minutes before they were getting prepped for their introductory interview. Talk about leaving someone high and dry. Anyway, Kyrgios claimed that he had to pull out of the United Cup because of a knee injury from his games in Dubai a few months prior. He said that he had tried to push through, but realized it would have only jeopardized his chances of playing in the Australian Open. And in an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald, Kyrgios called fans out for not understanding the amount of training, hard work, and dedication it took to prepare for a Grand Slam event. And then he pulled out of the Australian Open too. He claimed he had to rest his injured knee and couldn't afford to aggravate his condition, but he still managed to make an appearance at the Australian Open. In fact, the cameras caught Kyrgios getting handsy with his girlfriend at the event. The Canberra native had to be at the event in one way or another, and he had to make headlines in some form or another. It wouldn't have been a Grand Slam event had he not. Well, Kyrgios found himself in the presses again after video footage caught him getting a little too playful with his girlfriend backstage at the Australian Open. The two were seen playfully walking through the hallways before Kyrgios goes in for a hug from behind. His girlfriend, Costine Hatsi, laughs it off as Kyrgios honks her breasts when footage of the whole thing made its way on a social media. One Twitter user captioned the video with, just like the annoying couple in high school. Also, what's he doing there? I don't know, but at least he's having fun. See you in the next video.